All right. All right. All right. Well, welcome to another edition of uh, Politics Alive with Neil, or just Neil News Network, if you will. So, hey, today's topic is let's talk about the Democrats' new presumptive presidential nominee, Kamala Harris. Uh, this is in a historic coronation, as it were. Uh, she is the first black woman, the first Asian woman, the first woman of color to run for the office. Uh, she's also the first far left San Francisco level, uh, San Francisco liberal who had a major party ticket. So that's a pretty big deal. She's also the first presidential nominee, at least in my lifetime, to get her party's nomination without a single vote cast for her. So congratulations, Kamala, you are killing it. But hey, you know, I, I tease her a little bit about like nobody voted for her and she got picked by Obama and Schumer and Pelosi and Alex Soros and whatnot. But you know what? The Democrats don't mind a few party elites headed by those people I just mentioned, ignoring their 14 million individual votes and instead anointing Kamala Harris as their leader. And hey, who am I? I'm not going to be their white knight. You know, so it's not my battle to fight. None of my business, really. And after all, uh, let's just talk about Democrats for a little bit, for just a second, before we get back to Kamala. Uh, it's said and actually been proven that Democrats value social cohesion more than they value any core principles, which is why it's so important uh, when everyone's getting vaccinated that you go along with the herd. If everyone's wearing a mask, you go along with the herd. If everyone's protesting with BLM, even though they're burning down cities, uh, you still repeat the mantra that they're mostly peaceful protests because you stick out like a sore thumb, especially for women, which traditionally were the weaker sex or soy boy beta cucks, a uh, weak man to be cast out of the tribe was the worst thing, basically it equaled death. So that is the uh, personality type that we're dealing with, with Democrats. So yeah, like I said, if the elites want to install Kamala, so be it, you know, honestly, at least they didn't install somebody worse than Joe Biden. Although I guess they did install Hillary in 2016 over Bernie against the voters' will, and they certainly installed Joe Biden against a whole bunch of pretty capable candidates, uh, if not perfect ones. But nonetheless, as I said, if they're okay with Kamala, then so am I. So I do have a little bit of a problem with Kamala's policies, a tiny bit. So in the last several, I'm not going to go back to her. Start. Uh, we all know she had a shady start. She did some questionable things. And even as a DA and then an attorney general, uh, she locked up people for questionable reasons. She kept them in jail for too long. But you know what? I almost say anything that happened more than 10 years ago, yeah, you know, I'm willing to let it go. I mean, Donald Trump once said the word P word and the liberals went crazy. And I just said, you know what? That was decades ago. So uh, I'm willing to let it go. Not that I'm that offended by somebody saying the P word. But anyway, let's talk about what I have problems with from Kamala just in the last few years. She did donate during the BLM 2020 uh, BLM murder riots, uh, race riots, racial hate group, uh, terror, domestic terrorists, BLM riots. She donated and advocated for a group that would free people that were arrested at these protests and then they would just get right out the next day and, and protest and loot and burn and, and in, in, in 32 cases, murder people. So she donated to that group that bailed out the BLMs. <clears throat> she supported the defund the police movement writ large. She supports many soft on crime DAs, including ones that don't want to really punish criminals, uh, certainly low level criminals. So if you shoplift less than $900 in Los Angeles, you know, they don't arrest you. Uh, also, she supports those kind, those kind of those DAs and prosecutors that uh, don't support cash bail. So basically, no matter what you do, short of something extremely serious, you don't even spend time in jail. So you beat up some old lady, you're out the next afternoon. So what are you going to do? I mean, that's not. Um, I understand people that make the argument that jail should be for rehabilitation, but there's no rehabilitation going on if you're just sitting in jail for three hours and then you get out. Oh, so anyway, Kamala supports all of that stuff. Uh, she supports those policies. She also supports child transgenderism policies. So honestly, first of all, if you're an adult and you're into drag, that's fine. If you're an adult 
and you want to change what sex you pretend to be, that's fine. It's your body. It's just like people that put those giant loops in their ears or uh, Africans that have giant lips or neck braces. Or, you know, if you want to change your body and you're an adult, you know, I support that. Uh, you want to chop off your boobies or your wiener and you're an adult. That's fine. You know, there are some, I, I saw all those books uh, back in, in the day of people that would splice, you know, uh, body modification and stuff. So not my jam, but I support it. But don't do it to children. Like there are underage girls that have chopped off their breasts. There are underage boys that have chopped off their wieners. There are preteens that are put on puberty blockers and then they become infertile for the rest of their life. There's evidence that those drugs can give you cancers. Uh, there's evidence uh, irrefutable evidence that they're ir irreversible, uh, but they're, yeah, they're not really reversible no matter what anyone says. Plus there's just not a ton of research already. They have banned the stuff on children in Europe, but for some reason, the USA logs behind in many States, including her state of California, or I guess her previous state of California, which has now become a sanctuary city for transgender procedures on children. So Kamala has supported all that. She's hosted, advocates for child's transgenderism at the White House. So yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Just leave the children alone. Also, she supports the policies that's where schools will not notify parents. They'll basically keep it a secret if a kid is switching genders, not that you can really switch your gender, but if a kid is pretending to be a different gender or doing stuff, like just the school should not keep secrets from parents about the children. Boom, you know, end of story. And, but Kamala supports that. So I'm against that. Uh, she also supports uh, sanctuary city policies and the current failed immigration policy of the Biden administration. But uh, along with that, she's also the Biden border czar, uh, a term they're trying to scrub from the Internet. But she was appointed that she self-referred to herself in similar terms. Uh, she was appointed by the Biden administration, by Joe Biden, to fix the mess uh, when in reality, the border situation that she was put in charge of uh, was never fixed. Plus, she either went to the border She's been a border czar for years. So she either went to the border once or zero times. Um, so yeah, I don't think she, I don't trust her to do the right thing on the border. We had, between, you know, could be up to 15 million, but certainly we know about 7 million people have come in in just the three and a half years that the Biden administration has been in office illegally across our border, the greatest influx of border uh, illegals. Uh, and refugees, but that's just a loophole. Anyway, yeah, our border situation is out of control. Our border security is out of control. Our immigration system is out of control. She supports all the wrong sides of that issue. Uh, by the way, uh, I, I, I know what today's challenge is, so we'll get to that in a second, but uh, I'm just saying what I don't like about her. Uh, she also says she stands behind the Biden econo economic policies that have destroyed our economy. How, how does that make sense? That's... Uh, you know, and they say, oh, inflation has stopped rising or it's not rising that much. Uh, the point is you're paying, you know, average, you know, some stuff you're paying way more, but on average, you're paying 20% more for items in this economy than what you would have paid when uh, Biden took office. Uh, and also rate uh, wages have rise, have risen slightly, but not nearly that. So basically it's a net loss. Um, so also if immigration has risen 20 percent immigration, uh, if inflation has risen 20 percent and then it goes to zero, it's still 20 percent higher. Like it really has to be negative 20 percent before they should say anything. Uh, but, uh, you know, and I don't even know. It depends where you live. Gas is anywhere from you know, if you're in California, probably over over four dollars a gallon to, uh, you know, and it was like two dollars a gallon when Biden took office. All right. So moving on, moving on. Oh, yeah, one final thing. Also on the economy, there have been about 1.5 million jobs created, but here's an interesting fact and it's, it's all over the place. So you can Google it. Don't just take my word on it. 1.5 million, no, no, 1.2 million jobs were created, but 1.5 million jobs went to foreign born, including illegal aliens. Whereas negative 300,000 jobs to native born Americans. So basically if you're an American born in America, there has been a job loss. If you're foreign born, uh, whether you're here legally, which is some of them or a refugee or an illegal alien. Yeah, it's great, but it's not a great, great, great 
economy at all for Americans. So anyway, she supports that nonsense. She supports, you know, even as we're losing money through the economy, she supports both higher personal taxes and higher business taxes, um, much higher. I believe she's advocating for about a 40 percent business tax as part of the Biden administration. Uh, she's also said in statement she's fine with considering a 60 to 80 percent tax on businesses. Uh, she supports abortion, which I understand people, there are two sides on that, but she supports it late term. She supports it up to the moment of birth. And I think that's a, a bridge too far. So I'm against her on that. She supports the DEI programs and affirmative action. Uh, I'm not even going to get into the debate about whether she's qualified or not. Uh, Joe Biden said he was going to pick a black woman uh, to be his vice president. And that was a primary or mandatory consideration. Uh, having said that, she was a DA. She was a or she was a prosecutor. She was a DA. She was the attorney general. She was a state senator. And she got elected to all of those things, even though I guess her early start was through a little bit of hanky panky. But she did get elected to all of those things. And then she has served as vice president. So I think she her policies are terrible. But I'm going to give her I'm going to say she's not totally unqualified. It's not like Obama, who'd only been a state senator for under two years and then you know, after being a community activist, whatever the hell that is, uh, and then was uh, shoved into the uh, presidency after um, you know, less than two years in the, the Senate. Anyway, you know, whatever. You know, uh, he was central casting. He had a deep voice. He was fit. He was tall. He was handsome. He was well spoken. He promised to bring us together. Uh, he didn't, but you know, understandable. And honestly, I don't know if he's any dumber than. George W. Bush, you know, or that much worse. So, um, but anyway, we're talking about Kamala, right? Okay. Uh, so she, uh, Kamala supports giving U.S. taxpayer funds to fund the war in Ukraine strongly, uh, but so do a lot of Republicans. But I just saying these are things I don't like about Kamala. Uh, she supports, oh yeah, this one, oh boy. She supports the Green New Deal and she promotes the global warming hoax. So, I mean, at this point, anyone who is believing that thing, I feel sorry for you, but I, I really don't know what to tell you. But yeah, come on. I mean, at this point, that hoax has been debunked more than the Donald Trump said white supremacists are very fine people hoax or the Donald Trump said inject bleach hoax. Uh, obviously, there's a few people that are still holding on, but come on. Um, it's now just a bunch of crazy people spraying orange paint on European works of art uh, wearing no oil shirts or whatever they wear. But um, yeah, anyway, Kamala supports all of that nonsense. I've done other videos on how ridiculous it is, so check those out. Uh, but per perhaps worst of all to me, I think the one thing that helps more than anything to keep us free as a country is our Second Amendment. So she opposes that, and she opposes or she's in favor of most gun restrictions. Uh, and if she had her way, she would have the United States be like a European country where basically private citizens are not allowed to have guns, but only, you know, only the government is. So she's pretty bad on that. Also worth noting, you know, as I wrap this up, uh, the nonpartisan group GovTrack rated Harris as the, quote, most politically left, unquote, U.S. senator. And they rank, ranked her as the least likely Democratic senator to join bipartisan bills. Now, I don't even mind if someone acts on principles and, you know, doesn't... Uh, for example, Marjorie Taylor Greene probably doesn't do a lot of bipartisan bills, but she seems to act on certain deeply held principles. I don't see that with Kamala. So on top of all that, just, uh, I don't know, on an ethical level, I guess, you know, Kamala was clearly complicit, in not only hiding Joe Biden's mental decline from the American people, but she also repeatedly lied to us saying for years that, uh, yeah, oh yeah, Joe was completely in great mental condition. So she did that for years. So that's kind of not cool. So sadly, uh, many, uh, and I'm sure this will happen to me if some leftists stumble across it, uh, but many on the left categorize any critiques of Kamala Harris, uh, and this has started right away from day one, any critiques of Kamala to be racism or sexism, or perhaps both due to an internalized systemic lack of sensitivity to intersectional feminism feminism rooted in the patriarchy. So yeah, so basically, according to them, if you don't like Kamala, then you don't like black people or Asian people or women, you know, or fill in the blank. 
But whatever the case, I guess I, I'll own it. Uh, call it. Call me what you will, but I am not a fan of Kamala. So that brings us to the topic of the day. Is there anything good about Kamala? You know, what do you love about Kamala? I mean, is there anything? If I mean, here, I'll start. I will say for a woman, I guess she's 60, 59. She looks pretty good. Pretty good for her age. I mean, I'll give that to Obama too. Um, like I know people cr criticize Hillary for looking unattractive and that was called sexist. So I'll sort of do the opposite of that. I'll say Kamala is an attractive looking person. I mean, I once had a roommate when I was in my 20s or late teens, I don't know. And she was Ethiopian and she was incredibly beautiful, like an Iman type. Um, and I was friends with her boyfriend. Anyway, long story short, she was a terrible person. And by the time I stopped knowing her, I thought she looked terrible. But just in a purely empirical sense, uh, I thought that woman was attractive. So I, I, I'll give that to Kamala. I think her personality and her lack of ethics and her laugh all make her unattractive once you know her. But just looking at her picture, yeah, she's attractive. So that's my uh, answer to answer to today's challenge. What do you love about Kamala? Uh, my next post. Uh, so yeah, so please in the comments, just uh, you know, let me know what do you think? You know, what do you love about Kamala? Uh, so yeah, that's all for now. My next post will be about who will be her VP, assuming she gets a nomination, which she will. Uh, and so stay tuned. There's a few contenders. I'll break them down. But I'll tell you right now, spoiler alert, it's going to be Mark Kelly, but I will tell you why in my next video uh, as I explain it to you. So until then, this is Neil News Network. Good day.